Hey everybody, it's a mailbag. First one we have is from Amazon, and I'm, it's the reason why I'm doing this mailbag, because I actually need this. Uh, so we're going to open this thing up. This box is a little bit bigger than what I was expecting. Let's get it out of the box here. <laughs> they, 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 uh, they really know how to, how to pack things at Amazon. So let's see here. We have the Relano soft light, and uh, this is a camera light. And I'm very interested in seeing how well this works in my setup. One of the things I'm starting to do is to do a little bit of work on making this thing, uh, making my setup a little bit better here. Uh, I like the cutting mat, but the problem is that you spend so much time fiddling making sure that these lines are are right and depending on where I have my camera mounted you're gonna get a weird skewing out here on this side and so um, I'm gonna be tweaking this over the next couple of weeks and just seeing what I like but this is a uh, it's a nice looking panel here it's it's uh, got a that feels like plastic um, looks like a little digital display on the back and uh, I got this just kind of on a whim from Amazon. I uh, was shopping one day and just decided that I was going to try a couple of these different lights. But so I've got some brightness, CCT, I, don't, I guess it's color temperature, on off, uh, 15 volts, 2 amps input, which is a little bit of a weird thing, use 19 watts. Um, I think it actually has, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, it actually has a battery in it. So I think that this is just for charging it. I don't normally do this, but let's go ahead and open this up here and take a look at the instructions just to see if it does have a battery inside of it. Uh, yeah, built in 29.6 watt polymer out batteries can provide 1.5 hours of lighting. Uh, so, sweet. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, so we've got a percentage and a color temperature on the back. I think you can see that. Uh, let's see here. Turn it on. It is showing the battery's full. Oh, hey, there we go. See, so you just roll this up here, and you get different. I'm not gonna. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That there's really much reason to uh, to shine this on the screen. Let me try something. Let me try moving it this direction. Okay, so I've turned my other lights off and uh, I'm going to roll this on here for a second. And this is at 4% brightness. You can see a shot of my tools with all their various colors and then as I go up to 50% brightness, it's a little brighter. And 100% brightness, it's still a little brighter. But uh yeah, it it seems to be pretty broad. A lot of LEDs are, are super direct and you get uh, you get more shadows and things like that because of that. So I'm also going to play with the color temperature. So we were at 3200 Kelvin. And now we're going all the way up to 5600 Kelvin. So you get kind of a whiter light. Uh, let me try that again down here on the mat. You might be able to see a little bit better. So this is 5600 Kelvin. And that is 3200 Kelvin. That's 100% brightness. It also comes with this shoe mount so that you can hook it to the top of a camera and it's going to screw onto a tripod and all that stuff. So, pretty cool. Yeah. I think I'm pretty happy with it. It's, uh, I remember it being fairly expensive, like maybe in the $50, $55 range. But I wanted something that was a little bit quality. So I figured I'm going to play with a couple of these and see which one I like. So far, this one seems to be working pretty well. The next thing I have for you is uh, out of the main box, but I haven't opened this yet. And uh, I have been playing around with some sawn-offs, and in general they've been working really, really well. Uh, but I've been having some issues lately with them not wanting to function properly. So it's not that the sawn-offs don't work, but I'm having problems with my ALEXA integration with them. Uh, it's having a harder time finding it. So I'm going to play around, and I probably have 10 of them throughout the house, so it's really annoying. So I got these smart plugs, and these are kind of generic smart plugs. These were actually a gift from my wife. Uh, so 
These are called Iocor. <laughs> I don't know what, what brand that is, but um, I think I'm gonna play with some of these and let you guys know how hard they are to hook up. So as I get more kind of no-name things like this on my network, I am definitely going to make myself a separate network for IoT. For all these little IoT devices, I do not want them sharing the same network as my business. I don't want them sharing the same network as even my home. Uh, but all the TVs and the ALEXAs and the Google Home things and all that stuff are all going to wind up on their own separate network with uh, with basically my PCs and servers on a different one. So I'm going to see how hard these are to hook up and we'll uh, see how it goes. Okay, so these really couldn't be much simpler. You um, Install the app, which again, eh, 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 I, this is why I have another Google account. And uh, you install the app, you give it permission to enable the ALEXA uh, skill, and then you can change the name of whatever you want to call this. I have so many devices on my network that I didn't want to deal with name conflict, so I just called it Vacuum right now, and we'll figure it out. So let's give it a shot. Turn on Vacuum. Turn beast mode on. So, turn off 3D printer. All right, next we have something that I know is a little bit more makerish. I got this off eBay. Uh, so these are laser sensors. And I'm a big fan of these things. I've used them in my duck hunt project. I've used them in my escape rooms. And so uh, these things, you put the little, you're going to come with a little photo transistor and this little board here. And you can put the sensor in these three holes. And then just, I tend to bend them over this way. And they are made to, I always forget which one, but they're going to read high if there's uh, no laser and then they're going to read low when they're hit with a laser. And um, what I use those for, you can use them for a lot of things. You could use them for a remote on and off switch. But what I tend to use them for are for games. And so in this situation, I've been playing around with a couple of these. Uh, let's see here. I've got these ESP32 targets. And you can see I've got ducks and tanks and the awful Dallas Cowboys and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so these things go on little stands and they're based on ESP32s. And I wrote a system that could take up to 250 of these. And when you start the game, it'll automatically detect which ones of these are out there and will add them into the rotation. And so every single time it will randomly choose a new target and then that target will be on for a random amount of time and then if you it'll play a sound when the target is activated it'll play a sound when the target's shot uh, all that kind of stuff then it keeps score on node red so i needed a few more of these laser sensors to make that happen uh, with a few more of these things and then maybe i'll show you guys a video of how all that works last but not least we have the ryobi uh, p460 rotary tool and uh, I've been using Ryobi cordless stuff since the 9.6 volt stuff back in the uh, 90s. And then I switched over in the early 2000s to the blue Ryobi stuff. And one of the things I love about them is, for one thing, I've never killed one of their battery operated tools. Never. And I use them to renovate houses and all kinds of things like that. And, uh, and they're just, they've been really good to me. Now, I debated if I like this tool or not, but um, I went ahead and took the plunge with some birthday money and so we will rip her open okay that's about it so we have the base and the I'm going to tell you right off the bat the thing I don't like about this well there's two things I don't like about this so this is made to mount on the wall and I guess you could mount it sideways which I don't know so here's the deal the the battery goes in the top so you if you're gonna mount it on the wall this way then you need to leave clearance above it because you need to be able to get the battery out 
Um, the problem with that is that you've got these strain relief hoses that are sticking out the front and they do have a limited bend radius. So in other words, if you stick it on the wall, you are committing to a good bit of vert. Well, we can even look here. Let's say that's safe here. So you're committing to, if I want to get a battery out of there, I mean, you're committing to a solid, would that be 50 centimeters or so worth of vertical space to get that in there? And then if you mount it sideways, then you're taking up a lot of your, your working capacity here. So um, I don't know, but I decided that I liked it. I, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Um, so let's take a look at it. Let's see here. We've got the little mount, which is, uh, here we go. There should be a mount place right here. So we'll slip this in. I think that's right so now we can mount this thing here and I do like the tool holder on top and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this around I'm probably not going to mount it somewhere or if I do um, I've got these shelves above my head and I'm probably going to mount it flat like above the above the surface and bring it down when I need it now um, one top tip for your tools is that I write my name I don't know if you can see that I write my name on the inside and so when I get all of my tools they all say it where you're not going to see it so that accomplishes two things it prevents the name from being rubbed off and secondly people who try to steal your tools you can be like wow that's definitely mine and so uh yeah so we're gonna fire this thing up make sure it's off off okay um i'm not gonna chuck a bit in there it does come with some fiber reinforced i'm out of these fiber reinforced discs but they're uh they're pretty sweet so comes with the basic accessories that every Dremel is going to come with, but... Probably should check the collet. <laughs> I probably should check the collet on that, make sure it's not loose and going to fly off of my face. Um, first thing I noticed is it makes kind of a weird sound, like when you have... I'll go low. It, it just, it's weird having this long flex shaft here. Um, it doesn't sound super powerful, but I can see it being very, I can see it being very nice to be able to get in here and do some detailed work with it. So I will probably be using this in some videos coming forward, but uh, overall, I think I made a good decision getting it. I got it um, a really good deal at Direct Tools, and so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So that is today's mailbag. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.